Right. Or something. right. Well, describe what life was like back during that time. Were you single uh, when well, you yes, first heard that almost song? Almost and, always. You know. Okay. <laughs> so it was hard to get a date. Well, we grew up down there just an old mesquite pasture with a open ranch <coughs> old headquarters. Had, you know, hogs and goats. And my dad had an old 22 and he just sat behind the door. And one morning we heard the racket, looked out, and there's a coyote running an old sow and some pigs out there in the, by the barn. All right. He run out there in his old underwear, the old 22 is shooting at them coyotes. And we got a little western around there sometimes. Right, right. <laughs> well, of course, we was barefooted all summer. Just grew up, you know, uh, kind of wild, pretty much. There's six of us kids. Wow. Mother just put us out and locked the screen door and called us for dinner. We had an old dog called her Denny. She was her babysitter. Okay. She'd go ahead of us and kill the rattlesnakes and kind of take care of us. Right. So you lived on a farm at the time then? Well, it was farm and ranch type deal. Okay. My dad, he raised horses and a lot of mule colts. We had an opportunity to work with them things in the winter and got to plow with the old mares and the fish tail cultivator. There you go. There's still a need for mules back then. Oh, what are, yes, what good are mules now? Uh, just a ride and pleasure, I guess. <laughs> My dad and granddad would break them in the winter and then they'd drive over there to Sandy Land, them cotton farmers, and trade them to them. I don't know whether they got any money or not, probably yeah. feed or something. Right, right. Yeah, it's a little bit different what they got today. I don't think I heard a telephone ring last 15. <laughs> had a, one time had an uncle rode up in the yard with a horse <coughs> and told us that one of her other uncles had passed away. So yes, that's how quick, you know, stuff got back in those days. Right. Or they'd mail you a letter. Yeah, yeah. yeah a mailbox. That came in pretty handy when it came time to pay your bills. When it took a week to get there, you might be able to... Well, I sell a few things off to put something in the bank. Most money I ever made was pulling cotton or mother would take them old toe sacks and, you know, sew a band on it. We'd get off the yeah. school bus. Yeah. Pull cotton till dark. And my granddad was pretty smart. He had an old long table. Kept all the weights, old lead pencil. People would come by and he'd pay them in cash. So he kind of had his kids baited. He'd give us pennies and Nickels, old hands would be plumb full of money. Yeah. We knew we'd come back for more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wouldn't be with 50 cents. Though, okay, yeah. and where was this, where were you located at the time? Well, it was down about southwest of Thalia, Texas, and southeast of Crowell, Texas. Gotcha. Down between the Beaver Creeks, they called them. All right. And this is approximately what period? 36, what? 30, up to 40, and Right. We finally moved out there, I guess, when I was about 13 years old. All right. Go to that old Model A car. Four of us boys would ride in the back just like greyhounds, you know. They took the old turtle <laughs> off, ride to town looking out around watching cars. Yeah. Her little <laughs> sister, yeah, her <laughs> sister and younger brother got to ride in the town. <coughs> Little brother, he'd lay up in that old trough back there and sleep. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. You know, they thought we was being misused. They'd just take a quilt, them old handmade quilts, and we'd get under them in the back of that old car. Right. Now, was your family a musical family at that time? Or? Oh, well, uh, my I... dad's side wasn't, but my mother, they could play anything from a juice harp to a Bull Durham paper or something, you know, on a, <laughs> on a res across on the comb. Play them comb I have like done. A juice I can play that. I forgot about that. I can play that instrument. Yes, sir. I tell people I play nose harp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all my uncles, they played fiddles, guitars. Mm -hmm. So that's where you picked up that's where I learned. your love for music and learned how to play it, too. Yes, sir. Well, my mother, she... Uh, could pick a guitar, finger picked, and played a lot of blues songs. A lot of them can't use the N word anymore, but she played a lot of them 
So <laughs> about the picking and yeah. different deals. Right, right. They might not understand it today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other they cotton grew pickers. up pulling cotton, you know, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The other oh, cotton picking people. Fought them people and played ball and everything. We didn't know this. Different colored we were when we was kids, you know. Well, and that's the way I was. I grew up in Pecos, Texas, cotton country down there. And there was other cotton picking people mm -hmm. besides me, you know. And well, uh, they even I'm, spoke a different language, which you couldn't that's what even I've hardly always understand. Said there's difference. You know, you hear somebody say, Well, that cotton picker, <laughs> they don't know what a cotton picker was. There's bowl pullers right. and there's cotton pickers. Right. The cotton picker just picked the lint, mm -hmm. and then the bowl pullers, they could get the bowls and put in the sack. And clods, you know, and green clogs, bowls, yeah. make them weigh a little more. Anything to make it weigh a little more. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, them ten foot streamers, a little hard to pull. You know. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Well, well I tell them I still got collar marks from dragging them. Sacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a little bit different from what we see today. Oh yeah. Your dad, you'd take us. The grocery store once a month, and you know, of course, we'd kill a calf and the hogs in the fall, and had her own meat. Mother just take a platter and a knife out there and cut off what we was going to eat for a meal. And yes, sir. Pull a skirt back down on that old carcass. Yes, sir. I used to work in a saddle shop. <clears throat> J.M. was. I don't know what ranch is, I wonder whatever it was. When you got your finger jerked off, there's a fella come in, Jack Boston. He said, uh, J.M. got his finger pulled off. I said, which hand? You know, I wouldn't, I didn't say how, how is he, is he all right? But, what, but it happened to be his noting fingers. There is a reason why he has, I mean, I walked in here and I saw this contraption because he broke his neck in a fall and he lost his finger so he's had to relearn to play and make adjustments yeah. to be able to play well, after those shoulder replacement and it works too. and it's a creative idea a well. complete cadaver neck replacement <laughs> and i mean just no cowboy still trying to figure out how to play music <laughs> well. now when did you get together with him 1958, and he come to the LX Ranch. Me and my, my wife was cooking there, and I was working there. Single, uh, you know, we was married, lived in the big house. Okay. We didn't have electricity, but uh, whenever J.M. come up there, uh, he said, I'm J.M. Cates, and is this the LX headquarters? I said, yes, sir, it is. And we shook hands, and we've been brothers ever since. <laughs> 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 I had our our boss. He didn't get out there what, eight or nine o'clock that morning. Yes, sir. And we had breakfast, and we just kind of waiting on him. And and J M got a token. Well, we how we got come into music, I don't know, but I had a I had an old mandolin, and did did I have a guitar? Yes, there? sir. And I never did know anything about him, but we got him out and. Got to fiddling with them and got them in tune, or some way or another. And I kind of knew a G chord and a D and an A or or something. And we've been trying to pick out songs ever since. Oh, great! And uh, I think a time or two we got in tune <laughs> together. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I never will forget when I. <laughs> and almost after he seen, I guess I was going wanted the job or too poor to leave. Well, he sent me down there, me and Eddie told an old horse, told him 55 to drag a big old steer out of the milk lot down and pull him up in a cottonwood tree and butchered him there that first day that a fellow was there. Mm. Yeah, they just, he had some old greyhounds, they just got the internals out and he laid the thing up in the back of the pickup, took it in this zero locker. Over here, you know, that AIDS had that thing back in those days. Oh, yeah. So I guess I would stayed there for I don't know how long. But then I can tell you a funny story on this fella. 
Okay. Uh -oh. You're talking about Mr. Talbert wash, there, right? No, creek could wash out down there on that Terrazosis, I mean the Paterosa Creek bank about that high. So the foreman took me and Eddie with a team of mules and a slip, we called them, to haul dirt and fill up this road so we'd get in and out. For some reason, Jay, the foreman, sent me to the house to start dinner. We was batching, of course. Dean, Eddie's wife, she was down at Canyon fixing to bring that first youngin'. So when I got to the house, they had them old grind phones on the wall, and there's a ringing. And it was Eddie's dad telling me that they took Dean down to the hospital and it wasn't going to be too long until that youngin got here. Well, about that time, Eddie and Jay showed up. So I told Eddie, I said, well, your dad called, and Dean's just fixed out that youngin down at Canyon. He had an old GMC pickup. He just went to running, stripping stuff off, you know, and changing clothes, come running back out by the kitchen. This old foreman wore glasses and looked through them bifocals. He said, Eddie, he said, they know he's being hurt. They haven't lost a father yet. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, you know, pick up, just left his head in high places. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cute to have lost a father yet. Oh, yeah, sir. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anybody got another number you'd like to? Did you want to go there and take one of the days? No, sir. I'm doing fine. <laughs> You're being pretty difficult over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Are you sure you don't want to pick one? No. Yeah, if you want to find something to say, all right, Ed. I came play. here to listen to them, to be honest. I tell you what. Uh, well, now I've got all four of you together in order to stimulate some memories here and make a little bit of music too. I tell you what, I got where I can't remember what happened an hour ago. So well, yeah. Well, see now, Dave lives in Choctaw, Oklahoma. Right. J M lives up at Clayton, and right. we get together what two or three times a year, maybe or three something. times. Right. And. So I'm taking advantage of this opportunity right here and now to capture a little bit of historical... We played together about 25 years, had a little five-piece band. Yes, sir. So this is just the enjoyment of getting yeah, together. Yeah, playing together All right. 30 years. Played out there at that old cow punchers. I've uh, been over 25. 25 yeah. longer years. years. Yes. I think when me and J.M. started playing, we knew... Like three or four songs? I need this one right here in G. <laughs> Very long dances back in those days. We put our little foot a lot of times. Right. <laughs> I bet you folks nowadays probably don't have any idea what put your little foot in. They have no idea. Yeah, and they have the shoddy shoes in there. Let me play you a little quick mm. shoddy shoe here. And D. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get it started.
could have quit. That was yeah. nice. <laughs> That's what we were talking about, but nobody's going to know those when people are gone. They don't even play So we anymore. better get busy because when they're gone, this generation, none of the younger kids are going to know anything about this type of music that we grew up with. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. Good for you. And made a yeah, business out of it. I mean, yeah, we grew up dancing when, I mean, in the kitchen. It's nothing for Daddy. To, he still plays in the kitchen in the morning while we're cooking. And we I dance we in the kitchen. I think we might need to record some more of these old tunes then. Yes. You can well, do it. We'll do you another one. It, Great. Which one is going to be? It, it's going to be that uh, coming through the Rye and G. the history of that song or it might have come from? Or? I heard it all my life. <laughs> How about yes, the West Valley Waltz? That'd be a good one. Oh, I'm going to do that one. West Valley? Maidens, yeah, or Maiden's <laughs> Prayer. It's West Valley the way we play it. That's a good trick.
Now, have you got a playlist someplace of all these old tunes that you know? Just over here. Yep, just in your head. Well, they recorded some, yes. too, though. Y'all have... That daddy did. Y'all yeah. did the cow punchers. I think Dave. Did you run all those off for them? Or well, Leo did Leo a lot did. of that stuff. Yeah. 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 I got some recorded. Leo did most of that. I guess we could play that <clears throat> bow of the cabbage down a little bit of a quick one here for a little faster tune. Back in the early days when you first started playing with a band where you could actually make a little bit of money, dance, something like that, so, you remember how much money the band would make? Yeah, well, you said when we was making a little bit of money, it was very little. <laughs> what, was it, what was it, a dollar at the door or two dollars a couple? Time, or? One time, J.M., it was snowing, it was, it was bad. He slipped and slid all the way out there to the cow puncher. We played that night, and I think each one of us got a dollar apiece. What did he do? We we so poor we couldn't even pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> they they did it because they enjoyed playing for the people that came out to dance, and it was just good family fun. People could bring their kids, and it was a family affair. Yeah. Really, everybody brought their kids, and they every Saturday night they would play. And you had to take three your hat four off. hours. You couldn't dance with your hat on, and uh, it was uh, wow. yeah. Our spurs. Yeah. <laughs> we did have some try and come in there a time or two, but for the most part, it was supposed to be family oriented. We had a few food paws along the way. We <laughs> just cover them with little kids up, you know, to beat certain right. mammy up when the deal was over. Right. 